Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel with your first steps into the content sampler. In the last video, we checked out modulators and how powerful they can be at shaping your sound and controlling some performance controls. Now though, we're gonna take a look at how to build sustain into our libraries by looping the waveforms so that they play indefinitely. Let's check it out. Okay, so the wave editor, this mysterious place where the samples in these zones are sitting. Basically, the wave editor shows you all the samples that are in these zones. It shows you the actual audio file that's being recalled and played back anytime you tap a key that belongs to that zone. From here, you can do things like editing the sample's start time or end time if you haven't done that properly in the first chapter. Do check back on that chapter if you missed that one. But the main reason that we're going to use it for our library is to create loops or sustains. We want to be able to sustain the note beyond what it's actually already sampled at. So if we think about the samples, right now we recorded a set length and at some point that length will run out. So if you want to hold something for 16 bars of music under the verse of a, you know, I don't know, probably an 80s ballad thinking about the sound of this library at the moment, it's just not going to be possible because the samples will run out. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to select a sample here. I'm going to select this one here which crosses over our C middle C there. And I'm going to open up the wave editor. You can see there that is the audio file and if I hit the note to play it back you can see it play through. Now you can imagine obviously that is going to you know it's going to hit the end and it's just that's it the note's going to be over and if that of course is the same on all the files eventually that lovely held chord is just going to run out. Worse yet because the audio is stretched or compressed over different notes they're all going to run out at different times potentially so we have to look at looping these files. Now if we wanted to adjust the start or end times we definitely can here we can just drag this one to a different point and start it off from there. But you can hear that little bit of a click sound that happens when we do that. And that's because right now it's cutting in probably not at a zero crossover point. If I zoom in here, let's zoom into this wave format. Let's get right in here and see what's going on. You can see that the sample is actually cutting in not at a point where it crosses over to the zero point, as in when it's neither positive nor negative. This will cause issues like clipping. You'll hear this clip at the start of the note, which won't be very nice. What you can do up here is you can turn on snap and you can snap to zero crossing. So I should be able to snap to a certain point. But right now we don't even need that feature. So I'm just going to jump that back to the start. I don't want to start at any other different point. What I want to do is create a loop. And that's done down here in the sample loop. If I turn on one loop, it's just going to be one ginormous loop, which we don't want. We don't want to loop the whole thing because it's going to end and die out and then start back at the beginning. What we want to do is loop somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to drag this here and here. Maybe bring this closer to the front just so we've got a little bit uh, less duration. And let's have a look and see what happens when I play this note. It's starting to loop, but it's looping not so well. It's not looping really nicely. What it's doing is it's clicking or popping, so we need to probably add in some crossfades to prevent this. Now down here the crossfade is currently set to zero and this is measured in samples. A lot of this stuff all around here like the start and end times they're all measured in samples. So to make you know a second change it's going to be quite a high number so maybe try something like 50,000. You can see a significant crossfade there. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Yeah, that sounds quite nice. I could stretch that out a little bit more if it felt too abrupt. I could compact it down if it felt like there was too much of an obvious fade in and out. It's up to you. And I can of course stretch this out so it encompasses more. So that way ideally it will have a bit more variation in the sample and then loops back and plays that rather than just looping a small section. Now there's no way to do this across all files and that's probably good although it's time consuming and it does take ages and it, you, you just really want to be able to just snap your fingers and have it all done. You need to trust your ears at this stage. Your ears are the only thing that can let you know if clicks and pops will arrive. I showed you the zero point snapping feature but don't trust that. Don't trust that. Trust your ears. So you would need to jump into a different file set up your own sample loop, crossfade and whatnot 
on this particular spot as well. So it is time consuming, but that's why in chapter one, I showed you how to cut out your samples with only six milliseconds of fade at the beginning. So that, that way you don't have to worry about start time. You don't have to worry about end time because we faded that out as well. We have usable samples. All you need to do is loop the ones that you want to be able to sustain indefinitely. And you can do that with the loop as I just showed you. Now we know how to loop any sound we like, turning it into an indefinite sustained sound. This can be really handy with sustained and manipulated synthesized sounds, but also acoustic sounds, so you don't have to record a very long sample, you can record a short sample and just loop it. It's really up to you on how you've planned your library and want to use it. In the next and final video for this chapter, we're going to be checking out the effects and how to add those to your instrument. But it is not the last chapter. We have one more chapter after that on how to script a basic interface. So do remember to hit subscribe and ding that bell so you get notified when those land. So subscribe on your way out, but otherwise I'll catch you in the next one.